Move on a little bit. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, welcome. Hi. So today, uh, my name is Julie Scott, and today we're going to be talking about how to unwind your stress. Could I ask you to move a little bit closer, so, because I want to be sure I'm talking to everyone. Would you mind? Is that okay? Thank you. Okay, so we see here, I'm learning how to relax, doctor, but I want to relax better and faster. I want to be on the cutting edge of relaxation. So this is tip number one from today's lecture. We're going to go through a lot of really, really great tips about how to unwind your stress. Pick out one or two things that resonate with you. Do not try to memorize every single slide. If you would like the tips that I've given you, you can email me through my website at juliescottnutrition.com after the presentation, and I will email you back and send you all of the tips. But the idea is not to create more stress by trying to memorize everything. Just relax into it and say, if you walk out of here with, that was an awesome idea, that one idea was awesome, I'm going to use it, that's phenomenal. Because that alone, if there's one thing that resonates with you that you start using, that makes a difference. So if you feel stressed, you're not alone. Most people today feel stress. And the good news is there are a lot of things we can do to feel more relaxed, and when we let go of our stress, we have more energy, and our health improves. So I wanted to talk a little bit about myself so you'd know something about me before I got started. I was born in New York. I graduated from Cornell University. I went to Hastings Law School in San Francisco, and I started working as an estate planning attorney. And at that point, I began to experience health problems. So in order to do something less stressful, I transitioned to a career of marketing in the high-tech field. And that may not seem less stressful to you guys, but it was less stressful than, than law. But nonetheless, my health problems continued to worsen. And by the age of 34, I was completely disabled with fatigue and pain. I was in pajamas most of the time, uh, really having a lot of trouble functioning, which may be hard for you to imagine looking at me now. You're like, you don't look like you couldn't get out of bed, but I couldn't. And I couldn't get off the couch either most days. So um, I thought to myself, welcome, come on in. I thought to myself, well, uh, not a problem, I'm not feeling well, but I'll go, to the I'll go to the top doctors, I'm in the Bay Area, I can go to somebody really amazing, he'll give me a pill, we'll take care of it. Uh, but the doctors had no answers for me, so I started looking for my own answers. And um, I just want to tell you guys, I'm just going to go back quick and explain who I am, that I... I was working, I was born in New York, went to school, I was working as an attorney and I had health problems. I just told these people this, we're two minutes in, but I want you guys just to understand it. Transitioned to work in high tech, so kind of know what you guys do. <laughs> and developed very serious health problems for which there were no solution. So what was my miracle cure? That's why I do what I do now. That's why I started my business, Julie Scott, Scott Nutrition. My miracle cure was food and supplements. And it took a long time. As I said, I was completely disabled. I wasn't just feeling a little bit bad. Sometimes people say, well, what did you do? It wasn't like a thing. It wasn't, oh yeah, I had a salad, and I took some CoQ10, and you know, what do you know? It was all gone. No, it was uh, many, many years. Because once you get that sick, it takes a really long time to unwind. Nutrition is like planting a seed, and you wait for that plant to grow, and you water it, and you work with it. But ultimately, I did restore my health completely. That's why I'm here today. And that is what led me to this, to start my business, Julie Scott Nutrition. So that's a little bit about me. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in some of the points that I make in today's lecture, you can go to my website afterward and just uh, shoot me a message, email me, and I will send you a summary of the lecture. So no need to memorize as we go along. So today's lecture, what are we going to talk about? Understanding the stress response and its effects on our body. And then we're going to talk about mind, body, and nutrition strategies for stress reduction. So we'll do positive thinking skills, meditation techniques, exercise, sleep, and nutrition. And we're really going to focus on the positive thinking skills and some nutrition points. <coughs> so I always like to tell people, because it uh, seems obvious, but it's not, what is the formula to maintain our health now and throughout our lives? Uh, I have an acronym, SHED. You see, I'm really phenomenal with acronyms. No, it's not the catch any longer you. It's the formula for great health. Uh, but it's an easy way to remember it. Stress management being number one, hydration, 
are, we are mostly made up of water, it's really important to hydrate. Exercise, diet, and by diet I tend to mean food and supplements, I think supplements are important nowadays. Detox and sleep. So these are the six components of health. And today, this lecture is really about point number one. But in my practice, when I work with people on various health issues or weight loss, I cover all of these as, as a group. So the negative side of stress. Right? The leading cause of stress tends to be work-related. Probably most of you can relate to that. Um, and some estimates say that 75 to 90% of visits to doctors are stress-related. So stress is, stress is a killer, right? So it's good to learn what can I do to minimize this. So the positive side of stress is it motivates us to get out of bed in the morning and do something, right? A lot of us tend to be, at this point, just kind of wired to respond to stress. Almost will not do anything without stress. So I mean, there's, there's some positive side of this that's moving, but the key is how much stress do you experience and what are your skills in dealing with it? So today we're gonna to talk about a lot of skills in dealing with it. So um, in 1929, Walter Bradford Cannon coined the term flight or fight, res fight or flight response. And this term describes the reaction of the sympathetic nervous system to stress. So how does it work? Uh, we're, kind of, we're familiar with this typically, a trigger. The brain perceives a danger or a threat, right? In the old days, it was something might eat you. Nowadays, it's like my computer is going to make me insane. So uh, stage one, the adrenaline is released into the bloodstream to prepare the body for action, running from the crazy animal or doing something about the stress with the computer. So, and the inertial surge of adrenaline makes you feel good, right? We all kind of know that feeling like, oh, and all of a sudden we're energized and ready to take action. But what happens? Our heart's beating faster, uh, you sweat a little bit, your breath becomes faster, moving more oxygen into your system, your blood pressure rises as your arteries narrow and your heart beats faster, your muscles tense up, you're ready to run, the blood flow um, to the pre prefrontal cortex diminishes as more blood flows to the limbic primitive part of the brain, digestion stops, so more blood is available for your brain and muscles, your senses are more acute, your pupils dilate, the immune system, the immune system functioning is diminished, which is not a plus. Blood sugar rises to provide you more fuel, and hormones are released that makes blood stickier for better clotting in case of injury. So we're all sort of familiar with this feeling, which can feel sort of good. And now in stage two, the adrenaline, which is what caused all of the, that response, starts to come down. But cortisol, which also now is rising in the blood, and the cortisol rises, and that takes a lot longer to go back down than the adrenaline. And over time, if you're constantly engaging activities which require adrenaline, or you're simply constantly responding to things with that stress response of panic, the cortisol remains elevated in your system. Okay, well why is that a problem? So there is excess cortisol or elevated cortisol is a huge problem. Uh, it, was, it impairs your digestion and you depend on your digestion to absorb nutrients. A lot of the things, some of the things I talk about with clients even if you have a healthy diet, you're not benefiting from it if you're not digesting it, right? So if you're elevated, if you've elevated cortisol all the time, you're not gonna digest those nutrients as well. You're not gonna have the fuel your body needs. This is why people who are stressed, one of the reasons they get sick a lot more often. They don't have the nutrients they need to keep the body strong. Uh, you'll gain weight. Cortisol is one of the main reasons people gain weight in their abdominal area. Heart disease uh, as a result of elevated cortisol. You'll have a suppressed immune response, meaning you'll get sick easier, which we all know. Reduction in REM, REM sleep. Most people know if you're stressed, you're not sleeping as well. Uh, some temporary and some permanent reduction in brain function, especially memory. We all know when we're stressed, our thinking's appear. We all experience that. One of the things I tell myself when I'm stressed is, especially if I have a problem I need to solve, calm down. That's step one. So I can think clearly about whatever it is. Um, adrenal fatigue. This is something that um, I suffered from when I was ill and uh, elevated, having cortisol elevated for so much time wears out your adrenal glands, which sit above your kidneys and leave you pretty much perpetually exhausted. So stress is a significant, significant causative factor for most diseases. So why does our body do this? What's the value? Well, it's great for primitive man who often needed to run and escape and fight for his life in various situations. Not so terrific for us in modern times because the stress is constant and we just don't get a chance to lower our cortisol back down to where it should be. 
So what's causing this in our life? And I mean, you can imagine in your own life what is causing it for you, but typical triggers are negative thoughts, angry boss, difficult child, death of a family member, uh, sickness, arguments, time pressures, traffic, financial worries, near missed car accident. So, so all of these things, right, it's a pretty uh, inclusive list, cause us to experience stress. So now we're going to talk about, since a lot of those things are somewhat unavoidable, what are we going to do to manage it, right? That's why we're here. Like, what's the solution? You guys understand the problem. So we're going to talk about positive thought patterns, relaxation techniques, and touch on exercise, sleep, and some nutrition points. So the stress-free program, achieving optimal performance. You want to feel enough stress to be challenged, but not overwhelmed. That's really, that's the zone you want to stay in. And so we're going to talk about techniques for that. So mind-body skills use the positive thinking techniques to impact our stress response. And why is that important? When you have a thought coupled with an emotion, your body automatically produces chemicals and hormones. And these chemicals are either going to boost or burden your immune system. Right? So you've experienced that, for example, if you were to imagine if you're home and you're at night and it's completely quiet and you hear a window smash, all of a sudden your physiology changes completely. Did anything happen to you? No, it's what you're thinking. You're thinking something bad might happen. Could have just been a bird smashed into it, and now you're the worst thing that happens, you repair it, but that's not what you're thinking. And you're in a panic. Right? It's just your thoughts. It's just your thoughts, but your body changed. You could look at an orange, and if you imagine the orange and tasting it, all of a sudden, your salivary enzymes start working. These, these are just thoughts. Maybe someone takes the orange away from you. <laughs> you don't get to eat it. Right? But your thoughts trigger biochemical processes in the body, and that's why we're going to spend this time together today talking about ways that we can impact that. So there's a term for this, psychoneuroimmunology. Psycho referring to how our minds process the information. Neuro referring to how the nervous system reacts to this process. And immunology referring to how our immune system responds. So the res positive results, because we talked about the negative results, but the positive results, when you reduce stress, you can impact cardiovascular disease if you have high blood pressure. You can sleep better. Chronio, if you have chronic pain, that can be reduced dramatically. Uh, for someone who suffers with fibromyalgia, as I did, it can be reduced significantly. Arthritis can be minimized. You'll have much better results if you have surgery. Allergies are reduced, asthma, skin disorder, diabetes, and irritable bowel syndrome, fertility, many more things. All of these things are impacted when we are able to calm down our stress response. So what are the skills? This is the list of things we'll be talking about today. Belly breathing, gratitude, tends to relax, visualize success, slow down, appreciate yourself, smile, stop doing what doesn't work, just say no, accept what you cannot change, know that things will change, laughter, be kind, be generous, and be helpful. It's a quick list, but we're going to go through it one by one. So belly breathing. This is number one. This is a great tool. You have this all the time. Everybody's been breathing this entire time, I'm thinking. You always have this at your disposal. What happens when you feel stress? <coughs> When do you get your next breath, right? Breathe. Breathe into your stomach. That automatically, it's like it is your emergency button to stop the stress. You can't breathe deeply and hold that amount of stress in your system. So that, if you just do every day for five to 10 minutes, is huge, huge, huge. I can't stress this enough. In yoga, they talk all the time about breathing into the stomach and exhaling by breathing the oxygen out of the stomach. This resets your sympathetic nervous system. So that would be skill number one. Number two, expressing gratitude. This is also huge, right? How many of us walk around thinking about what's not happening right? When the truth is, the truth is, for most of us, in fact, I would say for all of us, if you're born in this country, you already won the lottery, right? How many people are coming here? And yet how many of us really wake up in the morning, I'm so lucky I was born here. No, it's, oh my God, this is happening. Oh my God, that's happening. But having gratitude, not just for being born here, but whatever the good things are happening. Stop counting, stop counting your challenges and start counting the blessings. And when you start doing this, the things around you, all of a sudden you start to notice more good things, and that calms you down. When you notice things that bother you, it's agitating. It causes stress response. When you notice things that are positive, it calms you down. Another, all of these tools are extremely positive. And what I said before, find the ones that resonate with you and start implementing them. Some people actually write down a thing, one thing a day they're grateful for. If, 
If they're the kind of person that's constantly focusing on what they don't have, the way to turn that thinking around is you just start writing it down. What is one thing I can be glad about? And every day, and all of a sudden, your worldview shifts. So it tends to relax. When we're stressed, what are we doing? Typically, oh, we're crunching our bodies, right? I mean, that's part of the stress response. We're holding it in our shoulders. We're holding it in our back. So if you actually tense the body intentionally, you'll have to let that go, right? But if you're tensing your body subconsciously all the time with stress, then you're holding it perpetually. So tense, and you can tense, you can t start by taking your deep belly breaths, and on the third inhalation, tighten your right arm from your shoulder to your hand, and let that go. Then switch arms, let it go. Do your stomach, let it go. But it's really hard to hold on to the stress, in fact, it's impossible, when you're tensing your body and you're letting it go. You need to remind yourself, when you are in these zones of stress, I can breathe. I can tense and relax. Stop yourself. You have to start having a consciousness, not just allowing your thoughts to run amok and drive you wherever. You need to be driving, not the thoughts that are just bouncing around in your mind. This is you getting in the driver's seat. Visualize success. This is hugely important. Uh, I use this all the time. When faced with a difficult situation, or conversation, visualize a positive outcome. I remember I was going to have a conversation which I was concerned about. I thought it would be very difficult and unpleasant. So I kept saying in my mind, oh, this conversation is going to be horrible. Oh my god, I'm really dreading this. Oh god, it's going to be terrible. And then I just stopped myself and I was like, I wonder how this conversation is going to go. <laughs> it's going to go horrible. That's all I'm saying to myself. Of course it's going to go horrible. So I just stopped it and I just envisioned the most positive outcome I could possibly <laughs> envision about this conversation. It went much better than it would have had I walked in with that kind of mindset. This, do you think anybody, any athlete goes into the Olympics going, I wonder what's gonna happen, I'm never gonna make it, this isn't gonna work out for me. No, no. Is that the success mindset? No, okay. <laughs> so visualizing success, never, ever, ever visualize or anticipate negative outcomes. Right? This is like they tell you on the highway when a car pulls over and the lights are blinking, some nincompoop then drives into that car. Right? They see the lights and they drive it. When you put those negative thoughts out there, that's where you start driving. Start driving toward your positive thoughts. And as a follow-up on that thought, view all changes as positive. So I don't know if you guys have heard this Chinese proverb, misfortune may be a blessing in disguise. And I think we all, we all have experienced at some point in our lives things that looked terrible but were truly a blessing in disguise. And I know, like everyone else, sometimes the disguise is really, really good. Right? <laughs> it's like, how could this possibly be a blessing? But the truth is, you don't know. You don't know. Why are you imagining at this moment that if, if you know in this moment it's, it is a bad thing, fine. But typically it'll be something, I have a friend, for example, whose job at Apple didn't work out. Was very depressed, very upset. Now he's got a much better job at uh, Amazon. Phenomenal. For myself, I had an office space I loved. Then the landlord told me I was going to have to move. And I said, well, in my mind, I've decided that this is a move for the best. Right? That was my way of managing it. And sure enough, it was. But I could have panicked. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't a great thing to have to deal with in the middle of everything else. Do you have a question? I got laid off a month before my interview with Google. There, here we go. Right, you got laid off a month before your interview with Google, and here you are, in a much better situation, having the opportunity to hear me. <laughs> among other things. So, um, absolutely, it is so, I can't stress enough because so many things happen in life and our first thought is, oh no, why? Why not like, oh yeah, something new and unknown is going to happen and that means only good things lies before me. Why not? Why do we always have to visualize this negative, this negative thing? There's no reason. You don't know. If there's change and you don't know the outcome, there is no reason to you don't start right then and there going, Hot diggity, this could be great. Why not? And if it's a little bit less than great, so be it. You're not going to lose any, any you know, if there's, if there's some misfortune you need to ponder, I promise you, you will have time. There is always time to ponder those sort of things. You don't have to start in advance. Start in advance by visualizing something positive. More likely than not, that positive thing's coming anyway. Um, and this was a little story, um, this Chinese story about this man's horse ran away 
And everyone in the village said, oh, that's terrible. He goes, well, I don't know. Then the horse came back with his second horse together. It was, oh my God, this is so wonderful for you. He goes, well, I don't know. And then his son rode that new horse, and the son fell off the horse and broke his leg. And oh my gosh, so terrible, your son broke his leg. It's like, I don't know. And then the army came because it was wartime and took everybody in the village except his son, because his son had the broken leg. You don't know. You don't know. So imagine the positive outcome. It can only help. Slow down. So for fast acting relief, try slowing down. Most people feel too busy, overwhelmed. Complain about not having enough time. Oh, is this resonating with someone? <laughs> Does this resonate with anyone? Oh, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? We're all so relaxed. It's like a perpetual vacation we're on. So um, people are constantly in a hurry. So for me, uh, an affirmation I love that I would tell myself is, I have all the time I need. And the truth is, I have all the time I have. Whatever it is, it is. So it better be what I need. And so I may as well make peace with it and decide, it is all the time I need. Because it's all I have. You guys are in the same boat. Whatever time you have, it's all you've got. You might as well start getting comfortable with it going, it's all the time I need. And if you reflect back on your life and you think of all the times you went, I don't have enough time. What, what, what was the end result? You got through it, right? Whatever it was, it was all processed, done, finished. It's in your past now. So the next time you were in one of these situations where you don't have enough time, can you just step out of that and go like, it feels a little bit like not enough time, but when I think about it, it's all the time I need. <laughs> it's all the time you're going to have. I mean, when you start changing your thoughts around things, it's powerful. It's really powerful. And one, one little experiment, I don't know if you've done this, I've done so many different kinds of classes along these things, but you can eat a, ra a raisin slowly. Just what life's like when you slow down for a minute and appreciate things. And if you take one raisin and eat it really slowly, have any of you guys ever done that experiment? No. Oh, you've done it. Yeah, they do it in mindfulness, mindful. right? In mindfulness training, they typically do it. And you have one raisin and you just chew that one raisin. And you have this whole different experience as opposed to shoving things in your mouth, right? Which is. I know, it's like, it's like, what, I'm supposed to chew? You know? <laughs> so when you slow down and appreciate things, there's a lot to see in life and a lot to experience. Yeah? I found uh, Google here is about great lunches and all that and meals, and I find that if I don't focus on being mindful, I, like I'll eat lunch, I won't remember what it tastes like five minutes later. But if I slow down, I can really enjoy the meals and appreciate uh, the meals here and everything. Exactly, and you guys have amazing meals. I mean, you want to start expressing gratitude, you should just be writing it down every day. I am so lucky I go to Google and get to have lunch there. Oh my God, you guys are so, so lucky. All right, and when you would slow down, you enjoy it. And I even find myself, I remind myself when I eat, because sometimes I'll eat, like especially if it's a bite of dessert, and before I've swallowed, I'm ready to put the next bite, what, next bite in my mouth. What's going on with that? Like, hello, the, the, the first bite's still in there. You know, and everybody does this. Everybody does this kind of vacuum cleaner like eating. Stop it. Stop it. Right? I mean, I, I work with that also when I do with weight loss, very common. Right? People just shoveling. Like, what's the emergency? So, you could try the raisin experiment. Much harder to do with an M&M. &M. <laughs> so, but slowing down is, is another great technique. And remember, you have all the time you need. Appreciate yourself. Ask yourself, what would the world lose if you stopped being you? Right? And that's kind of like, it's a, it's a wonderful life for these stories about, you know, the ghost of Christmas past, or, you know, from uh, Ebenezer Scrooge story. But um, the truth is, you already have impacted so many lives. You will continue to, and you already have. And there are people who right now hold you in their thoughts and smile when they think of you. Right? So when you're sitting there doing the really negative self-talk that everybody does, the insults, the, I mean, the way you talk to yourself, like would you be friends with someone who talks to you the way you talk to you? Probably not, probably not. So and when you hear that sort of negative talk to yourself, just turn it off, be aware, and just say, you know what? Actually, I have a lot to contribute. I'm an amazing person. And it's not about this kind of self-talk self that is silly. It's, it's very it's serious in the way that we really do need to appreciate who we are so that we can continue to contribute the best things about ourselves towards others. Because the way we are our best selves is when we're giving that part of ourselves. And when we're down on ourselves and allowing those thoughts to dominate our minds, we're not, not only are we not our best selves, but we're not giving our best selves. 
smile. This is so easy, although you wouldn't think so if you walk around sometimes, right? <laughs> I just came back from New York. Everyone got off the plane. I, I, could, oh, I was like, what's going on here? Mumbling, grumbling. What's happening? We're all just looking for a car or a cab. Does everyone have to be so upset? What's the problem? You know, and the weather was really nice, too. It was like 69 degrees. It was beautiful. I couldn't understand what was, everyone was so grouchy. So this is so easy. Smile. It's hard to be stressed when you're smiling, unless you're one of those fake smiles. Really awful, right? <laughs> Don't do one of the fake smiles, but genuinely smile. Share that it's a gift you can give people. It's a gift you give yourself. It's a gift you give others. So smiling stimulates the production of endorphins in the hypothalamus. I mean, this is research. Laughter also. Laughter reduces the level of the stress hormones. So laughter is good medicine. And so if you have an opportunity to go to a comedy club or watch comedy, this is an excellent thing for your health. Even the anticipation of laughter, that's amazing. Just thinking you're going to laugh could also reduces your stress hormones. So that's a really fun, easy thing to do. And know that you're doing something good for yourself. Stop doing what doesn't work. This is so important. This is the thing I would always talk to my dad. I'm like, Dad, the kind of parent you were sometimes, you know, it's like, no matter how many times this parenting technique didn't work, it was still worth giving it another try. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so many of us don't necessarily, we get kind of trapped in a cycle of doing something and we're not evaluating. If you see that something's not working, stop. Stop and see if you can come up with a different strategy. It's stressful to keep doing things that don't work and continually ending up with those bad consequences. Just say no. This is really hard. This could be really hard in the workplace. But the reality is we can only do so much. And you're not doing anyone a favor when you're a stressed out mess and not able even to deliver on the things you've said yes to. If someone asks you something, if it's hard to say no, say, can I get back to you? Give yourself some time to think about it. Think about delegating. It often feels like we have to carry the whole world, but I promise you, you can put that down and the world will go on. You are not carrying the world. Do, your, do what you need to do to make your contribution, but know that the world does go on without you, so you can step aside when you need to and delegate. It's fine. It is fine. Accept what you cannot change. Right? So the reality is there are things in life that are unpleasant. And if you continue to run this through your mind over and over and over, you are going to drive yourself crazy. If you cannot change it, you just need to accept it. Or as my dad say, says, you have to play the hand you're dealt. Sitting around whining about somebody else's hand is not going to help <laughs> at all. You need to play your hand. right? So whatever it is, accept that. Change what you can. And accept the things that you can't. Um, and also, observe the ups and downs from a distance. If you feel stressed or upset, remember, time heals all wounds. Whatever situation is, it's not permanent. There may be a permanent change in your life, but whatever response you're having in that moment will dissipate with time as well, even if it's something incredibly difficult. Um, your emotional response is not permanent. Life is a journey. I mean, it's necessary to give yourself time to grieve, but step back. Life is, it's the ups and downs and ups and downs. And if every time you hit some kind of down, you're sitting there with your mouth open, going, gasping, <gasps> as if you're not going to survive it, well, if, you, when, if and when you do survive that down, guess what? There'll be another one. Sure enough, following. that's what life is. It's up and down and up and down. So don't get overly crazy about the downs. Don't necessarily get overly ecstatic about the ups. Try to keep yourself in a place more balanced. And step outside of it. Again, do not let your mind drive you. You're driving. Look at your responses. Right? If you're not breathing because you're stressed, breathe. If you're holding your body tense, tense and let it go. If you're thinking thoughts that are very upsetting, observe yourself and say, you know what, do I have to react like this? And just let yourself walk out of it. You are in charge of your thoughts. Your thoughts are not in charge of you. Be kind and generous, right? This is always phenomenal, because not only will this help you, this will help others. It's really hard to be helping and giving and be stressed out at the same time, because that kindness and giving creates a happiness and a feedback loop that is very calming. And for that reason, be helpful. Right, help others achieve their dreams and you'll achieve yours. So true. And what's really amazing about these things is that 
it will, the stress reduces because all of a sudden more positive things happen in your life when you put that positive energy out there. It's just the way things work. So those are the key mind-body things and now we'll review the list and it'll make more sense to you. We talked about belly breathing, expressing gratitude, which is one of my favorites, tends to relax, visualize success, slow down, appreciate yourself, smile, laughter, stop doing what doesn't work, just say be kind and generous, and be helpful. So those are the mind, body, and now I want to move on to uh, meditation and other techniques, and I really like this. It says, you need to go home, take a relaxing bath, light some aromatic candles, and do an hour of yoga. But that's out of the question. How about a five minute smoking break? <laughs> so, um, not a great idea. I would really recommend trying to fit in. You know, and here are some of my suggestions, you know, what you can do, because one thing is the mind, but it is really important. The tense to relax is excellent. The, the breathing is excellent. It's important to bring in our bodies. One thing we do, I think, especially in Silicon Valley, but just as people, we tend to think of ourselves as these walking brains. We're these thoughts, and we forget that actually we're our whole system. Our body is part of us as much as our thoughts and our brains. We're all on the same team. You wouldn't think so from the way a lot of people treat their bodies. Right? But we're all on the same teams, and I promise you, if you don't think you're on the same team with your body and you treat your body like it's not on your team, it will get even with you. <laughs> right? So you, thoughts are one way. It's, it's a way of treating both your mind and your body nicely. But these kind of movement things, yoga, tai chi, qigong. Have you guys heard of qigong? Ch qigong is a Chinese moving meditation, and it's just a very, very slow, slow movement that some people have trouble with sitting meditation because if they sit their mind just they can't stop that racing so a very slow movement can slow their mind down for them so these are nice things to add yoga stretches the body again so that in a gentle way do not be one of these people who walks into a yoga studio competing with everybody to bend your body the most to be the strongest to be the best it's like it's not working for you if you're doing that okay <laughs> then don't do it so meditation these are two different you can always uh, Google these terms, Art of Living, Transcendental Meditation, if you wanted to learn. Uh, emotional Freedom Technique, again, you can uh, look that up, but that's a technique also to let go, let go of stress. And other things, spirituality, prayer, religious connection, that may, may or may not appeal to you, but these are things that, that do help people. So exercise, and I just like to let people know, just brisk walking 30, 30 minutes, uh, one to two times a day, just a few times a week even is going to really help bring down your stress response. You don't have to be, make time for the gym, or you can simply park further away from the office and walk. When you go to the supermarket, you don't have to play the parking game where you have to be the closest to the door. You can walk across the parking lot. There are plenty of opportunities for walking. It's great for your health. And studies have shown that people who um, are exercising perceive uh, less stress in their lives and have less of the stress hormones circulating in their blood. Sleep and stress. My point here is sleep is critical. You know, if you're not sleeping, you're gonna be more stressed. If you're stressed, you're not gonna sleep. It's really important to try to get this back on track. This is something I do work with people on in my own practice. It's, it's really important. At the very least, please make sure your bedrooms are completely dark. That will increase the production of melatonin, which helps you sleep. If there's a lot of light coming in your bedroom, that's working against you. So nutrition, I wanted to make some key points. Um, the brain requires a constant source of high quality nutrition. And if you're deficient in nutrients, you're gonna have poor mental function and an inability to manage stress. So it's hard to control your mind when you don't have the nutrition your body needs to function properly. Um, and when you think about it, how important is nutrition? Well, how long are you gonna last without food? That's how important it is, right? So proper nutrient levels enable your body to manage stress. And in terms of how long you'll last without food, with water, maybe four or six, maximum eight, eight weeks, if you're curious. Three key nutrients for stress management. So the ones I wanted to talk about today, protein, magnesium, and omega-3 fatty acids. And these are three foundational components to make sure that your diet has enough of these things. And nowadays, it's, people have, have lax in all of these, even the protein. So stress and protein. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that carry signals between the neurons in our brains. Neurotransmitters are essential for mood balance, and the body's not going to make those neurotransmitters without protein. You know, people think, 
vegetables are so important. They are, but so are the other food groups, so are the other macronutrients, protein and healthy fats. Critically important. It's not all about leafy greens. Leafy greens are excellent. Eat lots of them, but don't neglect high quality protein and healthy fats. Your brain is not going to be functioning that well without the protein. So what are some consequences of having a neurotransmitter imbalance? Stress, anxiety, mood swings, depression, irritability, panic attacks, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, memory decline, sleep disturbances, low libido. Um, in some, one of my nutritional programs, a gentleman came in and he was suffering from anxiety. So I said, well, would you like me to give you a supplement to help you balance out your neurotransmitters? And he said, no, I'll wait. So four weeks into the program, I'm like, how are you doing? He's like, it's gone. The problem was gone. He changed his diet and his anxiety disappeared. It was, I was amazed, right? But it really, it shifting his nutrition with some core supplements, got rid of his anxiety, no medication needed, not even extra supplemental support on, for the neurotransmitters. That's how powerful it is. Stress and protein. Uh, protein uh, needs vary based on the person. Some people need more, some people are less, but I just like to mention good sources. Beans and legumes, nuts, almonds, walnuts, macadamia nuts, seeds, eggs, fish. Uh, be sure to pick the low mercury choices. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, traditional soy product, products that are not processed. I'm not a fan of processed soy. Uh, organic grass-fed free-range poultry or meats. Uh, small amounts of grass-fed beef, buffalo, lamb, and goat. Those are all good sources of protein. So magnesium. Uh, in order for us to be calm, we need magnesium inside our cells. During the stress response, calcium rushes into the cell. In fact, if you don't have a proper magnesium-calcium balance in the body, that alone, without anything externally happening, that alone is going to raise your cortisol so, um, and cause the stress response. So it's very important to have a good magnesium-calcium balance. Uh, a lot of times when people have trouble sleeping, and I see them in my, often, in my office, I will give them a calcium-magnesium supplement, and that solves the problem very often. I mean, that's sleep 101 is a good calcium magnesium supplement. Uh, I didn't come here to recommend supplements to you guys, but I'm just mentioning that. And I wanted to talk about the food sources, uh, which I always say food first. Tofu, legumes, seeds, nuts, especially almonds, whole grains, green leafy vegetables. Those are all very good sources of magnesium. And uh, typically people who eat primarily meat and dairy diets are low on magnesium. Omega-3 fatty acids and stress, this is critical. Uh, the omega-3 fatty acid DHA is important for optimal brain function. Fish is a great source of DHA. That's why uh, fish is typically known as a brain food. And omega-3 fatty acids make cell membranes more fluid and improve communication between brain cells and actually all the cells of your body. So it's extremely important. Each cell has a cell membrane. And when that cell membrane hardens because of a lack of omega-3 fatty acids, nutrients don't enter, toxins don't excrete. It's a huge problem. It's really, really important to have a good amount of omega-3 fatty acids, which is now a little bit harder in our modern diet. So low levels of DHA have been linked to memory loss, depression, uh, bipolar disorder, ADD, schizophrenia, autism, general learning difficulties, and absolutely bad moods. So depression 101, I talked about sleep 101 is calcium magnesium. Depression 101 is fish oil. Hands down, absolutely. You have to start there. So food sources of omega-3 fatty acids. You have cold water fish like salmon, mackerel, herring, halibut, and sardines. Uh, vegetarian sources, walnuts, flax seeds, hemp seeds, soybeans. And some foods containing omega-3 fatty acids appear to lose their health benefits when you fry them. So I wouldn't recommend frying the fish, but baking it, boiling it, and if you eat it twice a week, that will give you uh, a good level of omega-3 fatty acids. Personally, I take a omega-3 supplement and eat fish. It's important. I value my brain and all of the cells of my body. I'm a team, right? So I invite you guys to do the same with your body. Uh, cautionary note about fish. Sadly, because of the contamination of our environment, a lot of fish are high in mercury. Mercury is a toxin. Uh, I've heard of more than one person who ate too much tuna and started to have some uh, nervous system and brain issues, uh, which you can get rid of, but not easily. So you really want to avoid the high mercury fish, tuna, swordfish, king mackerel, tilefish. Uh, beware farm fish. They're fed on natural diets, making them, uh, they feed them grains, which I'm like, they were given the fish bagels. <laughs> and weird, right? <laughs> so, um, and know that mollusks such as clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops, concentrate the pesticides, which breaks my heart because I love clams. 
but um, in small amounts, guys, because unfortunately, like prior to environmental contamination, those were fine for you. Now, mm, not so much. Avoid foods, this is so obvious, so obvious, but please, avoid the foods that are gonna aggravate stress, right? So some foods we just talked about are great for brain function, some are bad. Sugar, caffeine, alcohol, diet soda, right? A lot of people who drink diet soda that contains aspartame suffer from depression and have no idea that that's linked. They give up the diet soda and their health changes dramatically, dramatically. Not for everybody, but for some people, and you don't know because it's every day, so you start, if you do something every day, you just think, you are this way, and you don't necessarily think if I were to take this out, I could change completely, but that can be the case with diet soda for people. Uh, processed foods, preservative, artificial colors, MSG, and other chemicals, these things are in small amounts, but over time can be cause imbalance and uh, make it hard for you to control your mood. So these are things that really should be avoided. So the results of stress reduction, first of all, you just feel better, right, right out the gate. I feel a lot better when I'm not worried and stressed out and tense. Uh, other benefits are the, you know, amazing health benefits that you can see, heart benefits, you can sleep better, you're not gonna develop many, many diseases if you just keep this calm. And as we talked about, a lot of the worries, there's no basis in reality, right? We can stop running that horror movie for ourselves on a daily basis. Stop it. Go to the comedy movie in your mind. Go to the, like, the, like, the, the romantic comedy. Go, you know, go to the fun drama, something great happening. Stay away from the horror films. Stay away, you don't need to run that in your mind anymore. And better than Prozac, this is a good time of year for this. This year we're having a stress-free Thanksgiving. I stuffed the turkey with Prozac. <laughs> so um, you don't need to stuff your turkeys with Prozac, because uh, now you have these really great techniques. And just for review, what did we talk about today? We talked about strategies which involve positive thinking, meditation, exercise, sleep, and nutrition. And the three points I made were protein, magnesium, and omega-3 fatty acids. Um, I want to review that that's one part of the six-prong program that I do with people to have overall great health, and which is stress management, hydration, exercise, diet, detox, and sleep. And in conclusion, the greatest weapon against stress is the ability to choose one thought over another. And Norman Vincent Peale, uh, said, change your thoughts, change your world. He wrote The Power of Positive Thinking way before anyone came out with the secret. <laughs> and um, nothing is more true than that. Change your thoughts and you will change your life. Um, if you are interested in the summary, just a, the quick points of, that I made today, please go to my website, juliescottnutrition.com. Email me, I'll be happy to send it to you. And do you guys have any questions? Everyone good? So I thank you all so much for your time. I hope you feel like it was a good use of your time and that you walk out of here right out the gate just implementing if you could take one thing that you learned today, one thing. Stop running the horror movie. Stop visu start visualizing positive outcomes. Use your breath, it's with you all the time. Notice when you're stressed, you stop breathing. And when you breathe, the, you actually kind of create even more joyfulness. That energy from stress can be converted into a sense of excitement when you combine breathing with it, as opposed to taking the breath away. So any of those things, and I'm just kind of curious if I can ask you guys what each of you thought was the most valuable point for you personally. Would you guys mind sharing that with me? Can I ask? What, what did you think? Um, well, for me, a lot of the things are things I've been trying to do mm -hmm. all together recently, um, but I, I definitely think remembering to take a breath, remembering to slow down, and, and also the tends to relax because that is something that they do in yoga mm -hmm. that I feel like you don't realize that if you can just let everything, your tends just let everything out and think, actually think about it. But it's like you have to keep this like a your toolbox with you all the time, exactly. Cause, and what did what did you find? Uh, the magnesium and diet soda points were interesting. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Magnesium and diet soda, and yourself? It was all really great, but I absolutely love the stability to choose one thought over another. It's a huge, huge thing. Thank you. Uh -huh. And I always appreciate hearing what, you know what struck people the most. So I appreciate. And so uh, his, uh, this gentleman's comment was this particular thought, the greatest weapon against our stress is the ability to choose one thought over another. And what was yours? I think it was the supplements also, the magnesium, and then the uh, belly breathing. The magnesium and the belly breathing. And for yourself? Um, also the magnesium and then just the five to 10 minutes of meditation. Like maybe like one in the morning, one, and like a, it's just five minutes. It's just five minutes. I know people, 
You know, and I, tell, I often work with clients who do affirmations. I'm like, don't tell me you didn't do your one sentence affirmation. Don't you come back here for your next appointment and tell me you didn't do that. I don't want to hear that you didn't have time to say a sentence. <laughs> and what about you, Jamie? Magnesium and calcium. Magnesium and really calcium. Surprising. And know that it's really important to combine the magnesium with the calcium. You could take magnesium alone, but calcium should not be taken alone. It should always be combined with magnesium. Um, Anyway, I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you so much, and I hope that you'll be walking away with these ideas and that your life will be a little bit better, calmer, happier as a result of us sharing this time together. And again, feel free to email me, uh, juliescottnutrition.com. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.